to the Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. I want to thank you all for listening. Please subscribe and like. Well, our Pistons fought and battled and put on a gutsy performance before losing their 28th in a row to Boston in Boston, where they haven't lost all year, and the score, final score was 128 to 122 in overtime. We were ahead by 19 points at halftime, so the Celtics tied it up at the end of the third quarter, but our guys didn't quit. They kept on fighting, and you know they lost in overtime. They played even in the fourth quarter with them before losing in the overtime, so Got a lot to unpack here, though, but it was it was just a gutsy performance, and I just was so proud of our team. And you know that did that look like the worst team in NBA history? I don't think so. And you know, I guess there are going to be some of you that are going to say, "Well, our record shows it, and our losing streak shows it. It does." But we have some players. We just don't have enough players, and that was again true tonight. And we're going to talk about that. But we have two guards. I'm going to tell you that we have two guards. Kate Cunningham and Jaden Ivey, they came to play today, and they put on a great show. And Ivey had 22, and Kate had 31, and Ivey had 11 points in um, the last five minutes of the game and in the overtime before he fouled out. And he was just playing so hard. But and our whole team battled and fought. So um, the last five games, Kate Cunningham is averaging like 33 points, seven rebounds, six um, I mean, seven assists, six rebounds, and shooting over 50% and over 40% on threes. And there are people who, some of my listeners, <laughs> said, trade Cade. And, you know, and they said, he's not the guy. And I know a lot of players, you know, they have their ups and downs. and They look really good, and then they don't look as good. But he has looked good for a long time. Actually, he's looked good since Bogey's return. His percentages have been way up, and his turnovers have been way down. So... Anyway, the, the sad thing is he had 22 at halftime, and he was just torching Drew Holiday, who's just this great all-NBA defender, and and he just couldn't guard him. And then in the second half, they got way more physical with Cade. They double-teamed him higher and further away from the basket, and our guys didn't get him the ball. He did not get shots. you know. So it was Boston stopping him, and the refs allowed them to manhandle him, but he didn't get the ball. And we had, you know, Burks and bogey and you know they're trying to win as hard as they can and there are veterans and we want them to lead us to victory but they just struggled and they just shot and they forced up bad shots so that's the thing you know bogey actually he shot i mean burke shot bad tonight but he he shot um he on his good looks he shot a good percentage but he took a lot of bad ones and he just forces up shots and bogey took some tough shots actually bogey's the only three bogey made was probably his toughest three of the night but Anyway, um, part of the reason why we're ahead at halftime by so much is the, the Celtics, I talked about it on the last podcast, they are the best three-point shooting team in the NBA, and they were four for 24 at halftime on threes. So that's allowed us to stay in there along with Cade Cunningham making every shot. And so that, that was great. So um, we were up at halftime, like 66-47, and then in the third quarter, the, the start of the third quarter, they just, they, you know, they were missing all those trees, but they just took it down low, and they just pounded it down on us, and the, if we did stop them, the refs called a foul, and so they, they scored their first six shots, I think, in the third quarter, and they were all right at the rim, and we just didn't have any way to stop them. Another thing that really puzzled me is Porzingis. We couldn't stop Porzingis, and he had 35 points. I think that's it's a season high, and... He was never, Duran was never guarding him. And so I don't, I don't understand why Duran wasn't guarding him. Uh, you know, maybe he was supposed to be sometimes, maybe there were some switches, but still he wasn't guarding him. And so we could have easily put Bojan or Cade on Horford. Horford just sits out at the three point line, you know. Another thing I would have done is, you know, and Tatum, we did a great job on Tatum. Cade did a great job on Tatum. So here's the end of the game. We're eight seconds left. It's a tie score. And Tatum drives into the basket, and Cade gets way up. And Cade's not a great leaper, but he just kept on jumping. He just kept on elevating. He blocked his shot right at the peak, and it was so close. They reviewed it, and it was just fractions of an inch of, from hitting the backboard before he touched it or not hitting the backboard. They didn't. Even, it was still inconclusive. So when they decided to call, they called it. 
goaltending on the court at the time of the play. And so when they reviewed it, they, they came away and they, they reviewed it for like a long time. And then they said that it was um, a goaltend because it was inconclusive. So that's the way, you know, all the sports we all know by now that how calls work is that if they, um, if they're inconclusive, the, the call on the field stands or the call on the court stands. So I want to talk to you real quick, Piston fans, about 1988. And the Detroit Pistons are playing the Lakers in the NBA Finals. And there's um, Isaiah Thomas played, did one of the greatest performances in NBA history, in sports history. He, in the third quarter, he blew his ankle out completely. And he scored 25 in the third quarter. And he was running up and down the court, hopping on one leg. And then comes down to the end, we're up 102-101, and the Lakers have the ball, and they come down the court, and they throw it into Cream, and he shoots a hook shot over Lambier. Lambier's just straight up, barely any contact even at all. They call a foul on Lambier. Lambier. Well, I'm going to tell you, Piston fans, if there was uh, reviews back then, we would have won another championship because that shot wouldn't have been counted. They would have overturned that call. And we would have been champions. And so the next game, we barely lost in the finals, but Isaiah couldn't play. And Isaiah really struggled, you know, in the fourth quarter. He, after that heroic third quarter, he was still, you know, hampered by, by that bad ankle. And then, and then he tried to play a little bit in game seven, and he just struggled. But anyway, I just, you know, that reviewing calls, that just brought that out in me that they we lost a championship. And if we would have had the review of the call, we would have won that championship. But anyway, Cade made a great block with three minutes left. Um, Tatum drove in and got took a ball near the basket, and Kate blocked a shot, and it was it was just amazing. So, anyway, here's some of my big questions. Here's some of the problems uh, that, that happens tonight. Is Kevin Knox started? Kevin Knox started. So, how are you going to win when Kevin Knox is starting for you? And so, you know, he started over a SAR because of spacing. You know, we need spacing, and that's a true thing. We need spacing. Cade's way better with spacing. Cade's way better since Bojan's played, even though Bojan has had a lot of bad games or not so good games. He's had a few good games, but anyway, he still creates some space. And now Ivy's got to play, and then Ivy creates some space. But um, Knox was 0 for 6 on threes, 0 for 6. Livers, he, Livers was minus 11. So we play him. Livers is out there playing all these minutes, 23 minutes, and Asar plays 12 minutes, and Livers is playing 23 minutes, and he's minus 11, which is um, second worst on our team. And to Burks is minus 13, but he, he's one for four on free throws. And he's this great shooter, and Livers wants to make those free throws. Livers is a good free throw shooter, but he's just not playing in the NBA. He just is just... Too, the moment's been too big for him the whole year. His percentages are bad. And he plays 23 minutes, and he gets one rebound and two assists. And why is he playing, you know? And I, and why is Knox playing all these minutes? And why is Asar playing 12 minutes? And Asar's 1 for 2, 0 for 1 on threes, which I, I'm telling him, you know, we need him to be able to develop into a, a three-point shot. But right now, don't shoot. If you catch it wide open at the three, drive it to the basket and create something. But he just tries to shoot it because he knows he needs to be a three-point shooter. Do it next year, Asar. And coaches tell him that. But he's cannot, he got three rebounds and two assists. So Livers got one rebound in 23 minutes. And Asar got three rebounds. And Asar had two assists in 12 minutes. And, you know, that's just frustrating to me. And, again, they need to develop. And if we had if we had somebody else to play – then we would we should play them, but it's just we don't. And I would say this: there's some guys, you know, we're, everybody's talking about trades, and it's crazy. Sham Shrani, um, big NBA tweet, Twitter guy that uh, has all this inside information. He talks about how we're interested in OG and Siakam and Miles Bridges, and um, I forget who else. Not, oh, um, oh, Tobias Harris. And so he, they're talking about how the Pistons. He's got inside information. The Pistons are going after those guys. Well, guess what? All those guys are free agents at the end of the year. And so why would we trade for them? We're, they're, they're not going to sign with us unless we overpay them. And so if we do want to overpay them and they do want to sign with us, and Tobias is probably the only one that would want to, then um, don't trade for them. Wait till the end of the year and get them. I mean, it's, this year's 
a wash. You know, it's wait. You know, we just keep on playing these guys. But I still will tell you, wasn't it fun to watch them? If you watched this game tonight, weren't you proud of your team? Weren't you excited? Didn't the last two games have been so electrifying and so exciting for our team? And they show how much promise we have. We just don't have enough players. You know, again, if you, if 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 my team needs to run out, um, Bert, and Burks has just stunk. I mean, he just he he made some big shots tonight. Every shot he made was big. He he was four for twelve on threes, four for thirteen shooting, and he only got two rebounds. He got one rebound though. And again, bless his heart, he was in there battling for this offensive rebound at the end of the game. And we battled on the offensive boards, man. We battled, especially Duran and Ivy. They were down there every possession, and they were fighting for everything with everything they have. And so that you know that's all you can do is give it everything you've got. But it's just tough when you don't have enough good players to put out on the court. But anyway, so there's a couple guys that are the type of players we need. Dorian Finney-Smith, who knocked down those big shots for the Nets. That we were up, we were down by um, two, and then. In the closing seconds, and he hits a three, and so then they're up by five. So, anyway, he's 30. So, you know, do we need a guy that's 30 years old? No, but he's still younger than Bogey. Bogey's 34, and and Burks is 32, and they can't play forward, and he's 6'7", and can play forward. He has um, a decent contract, you know, for three years. And so if we want to trade, and the only reason why, so you say, why would the Nets want to trade him? Well, they are... In trouble with the salary cap there you know they have too many big salaries and so that's the guy i would go after another guy is um is torian prince for the lakers well we don't need to trade for him and i don't think they would trade for him they value him i'm sure but he's a free agent so here's what happened so we can get guys like um finney smith that teams need to get rid of so a lot of teams are making trades like even bradley beal got traded for hardly anything and you know the, these guys are getting traded for very little because teams need to get rid of their contracts the hawks are in danger of having to do that with some players so they might have somebody available so there's some trades that are made because teams need to cut salary and so you know they could really do that you know with john collins with utah and that's why they utah got him for nothing because and now they want to get rid of him but they got him for nothing because um, Atlanta wanted to get rid of his contract. They could have traded for a, a bunch of stuff, you know, two years ago even, and they didn't pull the trigger. And so that's why we don't want to be stuck, you know, with Burks and Bogey. And I don't even know if anybody would want Burks at this point. So we probably will just wait till the end of the year and just not resign him, is my guess. But who knows? But anyway, like I said, um, uh, Prince is only getting like paid $4 million this year, and then he's a free agent at the end of this year. So the thing that happens is the Lakers are so over the cap that we can offer him more money. I wanted Malik Monk two years ago. I have a friend you can ask. You know, he said no. He said that was a stupid decision to get Malik Monk. I said, get Malik Monk. He can shoot the three. He's young, and you can get him for a real, little life. So I think they're probably only paying him like $7 million. So those are deals that we can look at. Guys that teams need to unload just to create some cap space because the new cap the new rules the um new agreement with the players is you know makes it real hard if you're way over the cap so anyway those are just thoughts of, those are the type of players because we do need some veteran presence on our team but we need you know those guys aren't you know big splashy players you know i still think we do need to try to look to make a, a trade with our all of our cap space and with our assets except for the um core four and see what we can get but anyway it was just it was exhausting you know I thought we're up by 19 at halftime and it was so cool and Cade was just killing him and he had, again Holiday was guarding him and he still just torched him and then again the second half they just started picking him up higher they let him push the refs let him push on him more but then he didn't have the ball in his hands and we got you know Bogey was jacking up shots eight Bogey was okay so we'll go through the stats Bogey 43 minutes he played his heart out for that old guy playing 43 minutes. It's funny calling the guy that's 34 old when I'm 68. But um, 8 for 21. 8 for 21, and a lot of them were bad shots. He made some tough ones, and that's the thing that he can do. He can make tough shots, but when he's 8 for 21. And he is one of the greatest shooters 
in the league, and he was one for seven on threes. And the one three he made was over Al Horford, and Horford was all over him, and it was at a big moment. Of course, every moment you know down the stretch was big, but we did not score with from the four-minute mark to the one-minute mark. We didn't score points, so we went three minutes without scoring, and Cade didn't get a shot. And so that's a problem, but we had, you know, Burks is out in there, and I know Mati believes in Burks, and, you know, I can even understand because Burks can make some shots, and you would want to start, uh, trust a veteran, and at that point, are you going to play a star? Probably not, but um, Burks was 4 for 13, and he was one, 4 for 12 on threes. So, but the, again, the thing is, is the shots that he takes that are bad shots, there are four shots where he's not open at all and he's trying to shoot it over somebody and he can't hardly even see the rim and he still jacks it up. But he's been, and plus he struggled. He's been struggling. He's been shooting bad all year, just like Livers. Livers has shot horrible all year. So anyway, um, Bogey scored 17 points, but he had 12 rebounds. A lot of them were defensive, but he was rebound. So he was playing hard. He had six assists, which is awesome. Uh, I didn't write down how many turnovers he had, but he had 17 points, but he was minus six. So of all of our starters, he was had the highest minus. So our bench came in and, and lost the lead at the end of the second quarter like they usually do, but we hung in there and fought back. I knew things were going to be different when Duran got back, but he makes all the difference in the world. We out-rebounded them 57-44. to 44. We out-rebounded them by 13 because um, Duran tied his, all, his, season rec- his career record with 10 um, – He had 10 offensive rebounds, and that is, I mean, eight, excuse me, eight offensive rebounds, 14 rebounds total. But he was down there battling, and it it was frustrating because so many times he had his hands on the ball, even at the end of the game. At the end of the game, there was a huge possession, and he tipped it out to the corner, and he dove on the floor. And if he got his hands on it and kind of knocked it back, and Bogey, I thought, could have got it, but Bogey's just not quick enough. And he, he was right there to get the ball, but he didn't get it. And they ended up getting the ball. And then they called a foul on Ivy. So Ivy scored um, 22 points. Uh, but again, 11 of them were at the end of the, you know, clutch time in the NBA is defined by the last uh, five minutes of a game where the game's within five points. And he he came through. He scored 11 points in the overtime and in the last five minutes. And, you know, he... He had 10 rebounds, and five of those were offensive. And he was just every one of them. If you watch him, he was just down there battling. So anybody that ever says any trash about Ivy, just just forget about it. He might not be the greatest player. And he was, um, his shot, he still doesn't have confidence in his shot, but somehow we needed it, and he was three for five on threes. And he, you know, he has, they've been backing off him, and he's been struggled a little bit. And he started out the game, and he shot, Long, his shot's been long. His shot's been a little bit flat and a little bit long, but he held his follow through high and he made shots 33 minutes. He played eight for 15, three for five on threes, but he was only three for five on free throws. And he had three turnovers, 22 points, but he, again, he played his heart out. And Cade Cunningham, they call him Deuce, 42 points, not 42 points, 42 minutes he played, and that's a lot of minutes. And he just played as hard as he could, 22, 12 for 22 from the floor overall. He was really hot in the first half, um, four for six on threes. And he's, you know, been shooting way better, three for four on free throws, six rebounds, nine assists, and two blocks. And I thought he might have had more than that, but I, he, well, I, so the one block that he get, got it with eight seconds left didn't count for a block. So he had another block, though. And he's really getting up. So anyway, 31 points, but he did have six turnovers. And again, they they people aren't creating space. There were times, so we had the the what we wanted. So we had Dern come us up there to set a pick, and then that if he sets a good enough pick, then Horford has to switch out on Cade, and Horford can't guard Cade. But instead, we had sometimes Bogey was running right right in the spot where. The space was supposed to be so that Cade could come off the pick and didn't get it. I mean, again, Bogey didn't do that on purpose. Bogey wanted to win the game. But, um, yeah, I, Cade, you know, had amazing stats. He's been filling up the stat sheet. He has been looking like an all-star. He's been looking like one of the best players in the NBA. And, again, I think that we have a bright future because that is one of the hardest things in the NBA is to find your guy, find, the you know, that star player. And some teams just get really lucky. You know, you look at – the Warriors, they got Steph Curry, and 
he was picked, I don't know if he was 13th or 11th or somewhere later. And Jokic was picked in the second round. And, you know, those guys, when you get guys like that, that just makes all the difference in the world when you are, and Giannis was, I don't know what, Giannis was picked in the teens. And so, you know, you if you get lucky, you got to be smart and lucky to get those guys. But still, you know, you passed on him once too. You know, when you got to get a guy in the second round like Jokic. So, um, yeah, anyway, we got our guy. We got our guy. That's the bottom line. He's not going to always be as good as he's been recently, but it's exciting to see him. And now we got to turn around and play Saturday. We got to go play um, Toronto. And the Raptors just smoked us earlier in the season, but we get to play them at home. And so that's going to still be a challenging game. And they have a lot of good athletes, but then we got to play the Rockets. And so then we go on a road trip. So we got a lot of road games and when you got to go out West and a lot of travel, but we play the Rockets on Monday, Jabari Smith sprained his ankle last game that I saw him play. So I don't know if he's going to be able to play, but um, it'll be interesting to see if how many minutes I'm in and Asar get to play. They got double bobbleheads. Both the Rockets and the Pistons have made these two bobbleheads for both times. We, we only play them twice. And so, I'm going to the game in D in Detroit, and so anyway, I hope they get to play. I hope that even the coaches say, you know, they're playing to win, but let those guys play. We need to let Asar play anyway. Again, we, we have nothing to lose with what the other guys are doing, and he can make so many plays. He can get so many rebounds. He can get offensive rebounds. He can get steals. He can get loose balls. He He's a good passer, you know, and he can run the floor. He, he's great on the break, and why he's playing 12 minutes when, and again, if we had somebody like Dorian Finney-Smith or Torian Prince, instead of we're playing Knox, who's going 0 for 6, and we're playing um, Livers, who's 1 for 4 on free throws and, you know, and shot over under 25% on threes for the season. And so it just it is it's bothersome for me. Um, let's see, where did I leave off at? Okay, I said a sorry stats already Wiseman and again he didn't play that great last game but tonight 13 minutes three for three five rebounds one assist and no matter how much you can say and I get to hear people talk about how bad he played and how he's the worst player in the NBA I mean the guys that I respect in you know, national podcasters that have said it but I just can tell you what I see and tonight he was a positive force for us and I don't know why Bagley's not playing I have no idea nobody ever says why he's not playing and I, I don't know anyway but that, that that six points and 13 minutes and five rebounds in 13 minutes that's and he was down there fighting he, he made a terrible turnover at one point in the game though um again Burks played 30 minutes and he's out there scrapping like I said he, he went up for that offensive rebound and he got fouled he didn't get the ball but he ended up getting fouled so that was a huge extra possession he got for us by being down there battling but he has just not got the job done. And so, again, we just need more players. We need, you know, Monty Morris back. What would have happened tonight if Beef Stew would have been there? You never know. You know, and they played without um, without Brown. So, you know, they you can he's he's an all-star. So, you know, they had missing players too. But I just, we're, we're just, we just don't have enough players. But if you had Stu to the mix and you had Monty Morris to the mix, and I, he's supposed to, the six-week mark is January 2nd from when they said six to eight weeks. And so we'll see. And, and again, that's when they were going to reevaluate. I don't get the reevaluation thing. It seems to me that um, you would be reevaluating every day or every week at least that you would be having somebody that knows a lot, you know, looking over and seeing exactly what's going on. And I, I know he has the physical trainers, that, uh, the training staff is dealing with him and working with him on his rehab every day. But it just always surprises me. Killian came back. And, you know, him and Burke made some terrible turnovers, back-to-back -back terrible turnovers. And a key, again, every moment was a key moment. They, they both, Killian jumped up in the air and like he was going to shoot it. And then Wiseman went to the boards and was engaged with somebody else. And then all of a sudden he decided he wasn't going to shoot it. And he whipped it at Wiseman's back. And then um, Livers just threw the ball away to somebody else on the other team. And then next time down, we have the bench unit in plus bogey, and we get a 24-second violation. So 
big thing of the game. You know, there's like, like everything was huge, but we had we had been turning over less some games, but we had 19 turnovers. They got 27 points, and you lose in overtime, and you have 19 turnovers. The other thing was we were 12 for 19 on free throws, and you lose the game in overtime, and you're 12 for 19, 63%, and they're 21 for 25. They're 84%. You know what? They get calls. They get calls, especially little crybaby Tatum. He he cried about calls all the time, and he got you know he he gets to shoot foul shots all all day. You know he he was um, he was only eleven for thirty one. We did a fabulous job on him, and he was two for eleven on threes, but he was seven for eight on free throws. And and for Zingas, we again we just couldn't guard him. He could just there was times where we were right on him like glue, and he could just he's seven three. So I don't know why during it wasn't guarding him, but he could just. You know, sometimes Ivy was guarding him and he was shooting right over Ivy or even Cade. He, you know, he just can see right over top of him and, you know, they can't even challenge his shot. So, um, White was really good for us too. And so, and then at the game, Livers is supposed to be this great defensive player. There was a stretch where um, Livers was guarding White and three straight baskets. He just drove by him twice, blew by him twice, and then he fouled him once. So, you know, he just, why is he out there, you know, and, and why wasn't, you know, I wanted, I wanted to see Asar start on Tatum. And he been at the end of the game at the end with that eight last seconds left and the game on the line, they put in Knox to guard um, Tatum. It ended up that there was a, ended up, they picked, set a pick and Cade switched off and Cade did a great job contesting his shot that they had to, you know, to win it. And that sent the game into overtime because Cade was right up in him and he had to shoot a fade away with Cade right up in his jersey. So. Um, points in the paint, 66 to 40, 54, they outscored us. So that was a big factor too. So that was, you know, they, they, like you said, they just at, you know, they, they shot all those threes and missed all those threes in the first half. And then they just took it to the basket really hard and they got some good players. And again, they, they get the respect of the refs. And so, and we don't, so that's just a tough thing. But anyway, let's win Saturday. Let's go and beat the Raptors. I, I know we can do it. But the biggest thing, the big takeaway, there's always big takeaways. And you can say, we played the best team in the NBA on their home court where they haven't lost forever. And we battled them and we were up by 19 and we still, we blew the lead and we still didn't quit. And the same thing happened in our last game too, where we could have quit and we didn't. And so I just, you know, something's got to happen, go right for these guys. But if you can't think and can't see that there's some building blocks for a real good team going in the future. And two or three weeks ago, I mentioned that we're going to win games in January. Well, I really meant starting Saturday, which isn't quite in January. It's the 30th of December. So I think in, during this next month, we are going to win at least four games. That's my prediction. And I, my only other prediction, I guarantee to win early in the year and we lost. But I, I, I've said this like three weeks ago, that wait till January and about, part of that was because I thought Duran was going to be back and we were going to have Bogey better integrated and we were going to have our team. And now, now Monty's going to play. Monty admires Ivy, how he played. And, you know, Monty sat Ivy's butt on the bench for half most of the season. But now I think Ivy is entrenched in the rotation in the starting lineup, I would hope. And we'll see and go from here. But anyway, thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe and like. Be the reason that somebody feels cared for and listened to. And go Pistons.